Hi, I'm Jared Nelson from the Investing Channel, and welcome to Markets and Minds, the show where we break down big macro themes into simplified trade ideas. One of the big talking points this week in the markets has been the performance of commodities that are linked to economic growth and recovery, and whether the supply chain can cope. Two of the principal actors in this drama, lumber and copper, have been singled out for comment. Both, of course, are associated with the housing market and construction industry, and both are now being seen as proxies for kinks in the supply chains for raw materials, finished goods, and components across the USA. Here's why. This chart shows the price of lumber in black and high-grade copper in red. The price of both commodities has been appreciating since October 2020, but the rate of change now seems to be gathering pace. Lumber prices have risen by more than 50% over the last month and 369% over the last year, whilst the most active copper futures contract, July 2021, is up by 87% over the last year and 12.9% over the last month. So, what's going on here? Well, there are a combination of factors at work. Lumber production was hit hard by COVID as mills were forced to change working practices or even close completely under the pandemic. But the drop in production came at a time when U.S. consumers were stuck at home with time on their hands and money in their pockets, which they used to improve and extend their properties. One of the first industries to bounce back from COVID was construction, which, of course, is mostly conducted outside, greatly reducing the possibility of transmission within the workplace. This chart shows monthly housing starts over the last two years. We can see that the number of new homes being built fell away dramatically in the early part of 2020, but then recovered almost as quickly from early April. That recovery continued through the rest of the year and into 2021, and we now find the data above its pre-COVID levels. The supply and availability of lumber just haven't been able to keep up with the demand from the construction industry. As of March, there had been 1.739 million housing starts in the prior 12 months. March data showed a rise of 19.4% compared to 2020, and the month also saw the highest number of new housing starts for more than a decade. There are two takeaways here. One is that a vital part of the economy has been enjoying a boom over the last 12 months, despite the pandemic. The average share price gain for stocks in the house-building sector is 162.8%, and the median price change among the sector's 18 constituents is 108.87%. Our second takeaway is that the recovery in the economy will be far from even, and that demand could easily outstrip supply in key areas. A similar thing is happening in copper, with miners trying to boost production to meet soaring demands. The two forces will inevitably come back into balance or equilibrium at some stage, but copper mines can't just be turned on at the flick of a switch, and there is the process of extraction, refining, smelting, and transportation before copper can reach its end markets. Shipping and transportation is another pinch point in the supply chain. The cost of shipping a container between Asia and the USA has risen dramatically over the last 12 months. There have also been huge backlogs at key West Coast ports, forcing container ships to wait offshore before they can be unloaded. COVID-19 and the associated lockdown has also led to a shortage of containers, or at least a shortage of shipping containers in the places that they are needed most. As the economy begins to reopen fully, more cracks are likely to emerge. Silicon chip shortages are beginning to have an impact in the auto industry, with production being scaled back or shut down by major manufacturers. Once again, suppliers are trying to boost production, but as with the copper mines, chip manufacturing facilities are not available at a moment's notice. And in fact, there is a genuine shortage of spare capacity in the sector. It seems that the shortage of chips will begin to spill over into other industries and consumer electronics before the shortfall in supply can be made up. As we have seen with the example of the house builders and lumber prices, there are opportunities for traders and investors brought about by the reopening of the economy. But there are also knock-on effects that could be self-regulating. For example, rising lumber prices are said to have already added $36,000 to the cost of the average single-family home, a price rise that may soon begin to dampen demand for newly constructed properties. That's all we have time for this week. Please make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions.